Hey guys, we're in Boston with a couple team members of the, the New England Patriots and we've got a very special episode of Talking Watches. I'm Jake Bailey, I'm the punter for the New England Patriots. I'm in my fourth year, I'm from San Diego and I'm gonna talk some watches. Nick Folk. I'm um, the kicker for the Patriots um, in year 15. Yeah, happy to be here. Joe Cardona, long snapper for the New England Patriots. Uh, niche position, uh, surely. But uh, yeah, I'm in my eighth year. Went to the Naval Academy, also from San Diego. Nick, I'd love to start with you because you're kind of the, the, the horological team leader <laughs> here maybe, right? Uh, I don't know about that. I guess you could say that I kind of got Jake involved a little bit. I think Joe was kind of on the train to, to start. And then uh, last year, um, at the end of the year, you know, as a kicker, I trust these guys to, you know, they got to do, they do a great job for me all the time. And I can't do my job without them. So as just kind of a token of my appreciation for what they've done, I kind of, uh, we were talking about watch at the end of last year a lot. And I um, asked a good buddy of mine, Justin, if we could find a, a watch to kind of commemorate, I don't know, the three of us having a, a good season and, and a good uh, time together. And he kind of came up with this one. I enjoyed it because it had a, a, you know, the, a little bit of the Patriot colors in there, the red and the blue. And um, it ended up coming right at the end of last season. I got to give it to him, which was a, a pretty special moment for me. It's just a, a kind of a fun piece. And uh, I, I think they enjoy it because I think they're now fully hooked on the watch trend. Yeah, you got <laughs> you gave us the bug, man. <laughs> I, I, and that's, I'm, uh, yeah, that's it, it, it's think, hurting the wallet for sure. <laughs> I think mine is 1976 Seiko Pogue and Joe's is 77 or it's vice versa yeah. there. While we're on that train too, and it kind of fits the, the Seiko model, you know, Justin sourced me my Captain Willard, which I'm pretty stoked on. Mm -hmm. Being a Naval Academy grad military guy and um, even kind of my unit's a small boat unit, so it's uh, it means it means a little something extra um, to have like a real piece of military history with the Captain Willard. You know, not just movie history, but this uh, the the story on it is that it was uh, bought in country in Vietnam and uh, was worn throughout. So definitely don't have any original papers or original <laughs> box. I don't think uh, the original owner was too worried about keeping those in a war yeah. zone, but. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can feel this thing. It, it, it has some heft to oh, it. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's meant to survive, so. This thing is awesome. So we've got some great Seikos on the table, uh, and we've also got a number of uh, Rolex pieces. Uh, I'd love to hear a bit about your uh, Submariners, your grandfathers. Yep, it's my grandpa's. And segueing from Joe talking about kind of a movie watch, this is my movie watch. My grandpa, he was an Air Force pilot, and after that, he flew for TWA and his route was San Francisco to New York to Switzerland. He bought this Rolex Submariner. It's a 6538 James Bond. He bought this in Switzerland for 100 bucks when his paycheck every month was 400 bucks. <laughs> um, so yeah, 1956. He's done a lot since 1956. He flew for many more years after that and ended up buying a ranch outside of Reno, Nevada. And this was his farming watch. <laughs> he handed it down to me with a leather strap and obviously it doesn't have a bezel. So if anybody out there can help me source that, I would love to make this watch complete. He said he bought it in 1956. There's no papers to prove it, yeah. but that's what he says. And the bracelet is actually from 1956. Yeah, I believe that's the first year of production for the 6538. So he bought that in 56 and then Dr. No didn't come out till 62, I believe. Uh -huh. So he had it for a full six years before it was cool. <laughs> and uh, Nick, you have your own story of uh, your, your grandpa's watch, right? Your yeah, grandpa's I, have a, I have another sub as well. It's a 771680. My grandfather bought it in 77 for like 400 bucks, I think at the time he said. <laughs> and um, he wore it every day. He was a surgeon. He wore it all the time. Uh, wore it so much that he needed a new bracelet. And he went to the Rolex store to get a new bracelet probably 2000s, early 2010s. And they said it'd be like two grand for a new bracelet. And he said, <laughs> um, I only paid 400 bucks for the watch. And they said, well, it's worth quite a bit more than that. And so he just put on a random bracelet. He just found a bracelet that fit and put it on. 
he passed away in 2018 and my mom was like, is there anything you want from his collection of stuff? And I said, look, if no one wants his watch, I'm, I would love the watch just because I'd wear it all the time. He got it engraved with his, with his last name, Styles, on the back. So every time I wear it, it's gonna, you know, I just got a good memory of it all the time. So it's a lot of fun to have it. Hopefully one day I'll pass it on to my kids. I have three boys, so mm-hmm. I got three watches. One of them though, I might not pass down. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You wanna talk about that? Keep going, <laughs> you're on a roll. Well, I mean, I guess then uh, I have a 6264 1970 Paul Newman that last year during the season, I was kind of like, all right, I'm on year 15 now, so I was, let's do something nice for myself. I did it uh, towards the end of last year. These guys were around when I came in and stuff. And, <laughs> and when, the, when I kind of saw their face kind of light up with it, that's when I kind of knew like, all right, I'm gonna get them a watch at the end of the season. That was kind of like the, the, the kicking off point. But yeah, that's my 6264. That's my kind of fun watch that I, I love to have. This fits Nick so well. It's because, I mean, really he's the, the pinnacle of attention to detail and like precision all our jobs take a ton of precision i mean and that's, being old <laughs> yeah really old we're gonna get into that for sure um vintage you know yeah. um i mean no one's no one's aged better um but realistically like you know all our jobs really rely on precision yeah. i mean our our operation time is is down to you know the hundreds of a second where it's making significant impact so i don't think there's a better representation of what we do um and doing it over a long period of time than a legendary you know watch like this i mean i I, you can't you can't beat it and what i really love here is i mean it's not just uh any old paul newman if there is such thing as any old one i mean it's a 6264 transitional with uh the black bezel i mean it's 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 a hot watch i love it I, i i wear it when i can it's super light um on the wrist it kind of feels like you're not wearing much which is kind of cool this one is what kind of got me started. I couldn't pull the trigger, so my one Christmas, my wife pulled the trigger for me to get me started on it. I wore it a lot until I got my grandfather's, and, and now I wear that one more every day than anything. But yeah, so this is, it's just a, a stainless one, I think 2014, 2015, somewhere in there. And we got uh, a Jake to uh, kind of- uh, Oh yeah, a lot of peer pressure. A lot of peer on. pressure to get his uh, his. And I'm so up. happy. I, I love this thing. It's, um, it was kind of a way for me to remember and just appreciate my time with the Patriots. It's Patriots colors, kind of blue, and then got the red accents. The white gold is awesome, feels really nice wearing it. And uh, yeah, these guys sent it to me once in a group chat. And, you know, I was like, oh man, this looks different. This is very unique and cool. Something I'm excited to watch it grow over many, many years and see what happens to it. You know, I, I have a few friends at the Rolex boutique and on Newberry Street, the Long, mm. Long's boutique, and they helped me with this. And it, I'm, I'm very happy I made that work. But he, he has the, the world's tiniest wrist. Yeah. <laughs> so like Joe and I can't even can't try even to get it, it on. Yeah, it's bad. You two peer pressured me, but you and I peer pressured him into one too, which yeah. I'm, I'm happy he did. Well, I mean, it, and you know, picking up my sub this season, you know, it's new and really what drew me to it, was especially talking to these guys and, and the subs they had hold so much meaning in their family, you know, and mine one day, I know I, if my dad's watching this, uh, dad, surprise, surprise, you're going to get one of these too. Um, and you can't do anything about it. Uh, you're going to be wearing a Rolex soon enough, but you know, really, you know, not only does it hold, you know, that kind of military history that I love, you know, dating back to early subs and being issued to UDT and SEAL guys. But also with that, my dad served 24 years in the Navy. Uh, his whole career has been Department of Defense. So really, you know, it's like a, a culmination for him, you know, who's gonna retire soon. It'll be something we both can wear <laughs> and kind of commemorate, you know, one, you know, his service, the things he's done, but also his kind of foresight and teaching me to long snap and all these things that, that have provided you know, a means to, to be able to do all this. So yeah, it was a good bit of peer pressuring that I, that I greatly appreciate. So. I think it's super cool. I think it, I mean, not only the long time in part, but you go to Naval Academy, you serving, you know, within the same branch of the military and stuff. I think it's awesome. I think it'll be a, a really cool 
kind of commemorative piece for both of you to have. Yeah, I don't know if this is gonna go overseas with me whenever, <laughs> what, you know, when the time comes. I don't know if this, I think this might have to stay behind in the safe. <laughs> with that though, I, I think one thing that will go with me wherever I go is the, this Breitling. You know, it's a, actually a nod to, you know, kind of one of my favorite watch pages. It's watches of espionage. I mean, you see the the King Abdullah seal, you know, it's, I, I'd seen it on, uh, you know, as Hodinkee kind of wrote an article about it. And I just happened to recognize it at a, at a random jewelry shop in, uh, in Southern California. And mm -hmm. I, I knew what I was looking at and I just couldn't help myself, you know, and, it, and honestly, it's become my everyday. It's comfortable and it, it's just one of those cool pieces that there's a little bit of a story behind it. I know where it comes from, you know, it wasn't gifted to me personally, but um, I, I can't help but feel like that's a tool watch that that's going to be used and I can't wait to use it. I couldn't be outdone by these guys. Um, <laughs> so I had to bring out the, uh, the Super Bowl rings. So, you know, a couple, uh, couple things that mean a lot. need to get one of those. I mean, these are talk about white gold. Yeah. Talk about you compared to, to Jake's watch up there. The Jake, can you fit this on your wrist? <laughs> <laughs> Probably it's that, it's that oh, tiny. Man. You know, when you talk about a, a couple of things that mean a lot to me, when you're a part of Super Bowl 51, uh, you know, one of the greatest games ever played, you know, the 28 to three, it's got the 283 diamonds <laughs> in it. It all correlates. And then Super Bowl 53, which, you know, it's the one between us and the Rams, 13 to three. Uh, they, they called it a, uh, you know, a snooze fest and uh, one of the most boring Super Bowls. For me, you know, being a part of that game that was so special teams heavy was, uh, was, was really cool. And Jake, you have a fourth watch um, that is kind of tied to a pretty cool achievement, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit separate from the typical, you know, stainless steel white gold that I like to stick to. But yeah, this is, I, I got this for making the Pro Bowl my second year. You know, I, I wouldn't have achieved that without these guys, without all the rest of my other teammates. And it's uh, something I wear on Sundays every game day to kind of remind myself that like, you know, I, I belong, let's go, let's go play. Dream scenario, one second left in the Super Bowl, uh, snap, hold, kick um what are you guys buying with uh the, the super bowl uh winning paycheck? we're 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 making the kick and then i'm pro i would probably get uh, or try to get us to do like a an awesome custom piece that's like one of one for each of us right mm -hmm. so like i mean it might be one of three but we'd be only three in the world with it so i, I would think doing something like that where it's just like something super commemorative to us and that season that's where my mind would go i think would be would be just to to really have it be commemorative of that season and just say well this is this is it boys this is you know the rings are cool they, they, those are cool but we could have one of three where you know 53 plus guys even with you and staff and stuff get the rings and stuff but we could do something pretty cool i think that's where my mind would kind of go yeah, i think i'm good with that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i don't deal. know if there's anything better than that